Welcome again to Fairtax Power Radio. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Willero. And we are, oh, let's pick it up, the, the Fairtax, Fairtax guys. guys. Coming to you from Big Daddy Studios in Gainesville, Florida. This is our pre-recorded uh, version for this, uh, this week. But uh, we are streaming live on Facebook on the Fairtax official page. The comments are live. So if you've still right. got something that you want to talk about uh, relative to the discussion we're having here, uh, me, Ron, and, uh, and Randy are still going to be there and answering you live as this uh, pre-recorded video to streams. And again, we'd like to remind you to give us a call, uh, not a call here, an email, thefairtaxguys at gmail.com is our email address. The Fair Tax Guys also have a Facebook page where you can leave us a comment as well. And of course, if you have a nice, thought-provoking comment, we will uh, introduce that on Fair Tax Power Radio and, and go with it. Because we get some great comments. We do. Uh, suggestions from, from our listeners and our viewers and so forth. Suggestions for new shows. Uh, questions that actually could form the basis of another show. We get some great input from people, both on Facebook, uh, you know, during the broadcast and uh, at our, our Facebook page yeah. and on our email page. Yeah, and we met the yep. guy who does our webinars now that way. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So um, it's, it's good. Uh, Thefairtaxguys at gmail.com. Feel free to send us a comment and uh, we'll react to it. By the way, this episode is airing on Halloween. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next week is the 31st. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, some of you may want to consider uh, going out uh, trick-or-treating dressed up as an IRS agent. What do you think? <laughs> I think you'd scare the snot out of everybody that you stalked on their door. But yeah. uh, 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 a comment that came in on last week's show says, why don't you just put some fair tax cards in with the candy that you give the kitty? So, you know, well, uh, that might be a good idea. So you go trick-or-treating as an IRS agent. They open up the door and say, oh, you know, how are you? And you say, I want 37% of your candy. Yeah, t teach the kids, teach your kids about taxes. Eat 30% of their candy when they bring it home. So that's what that's all about. So anyways, hope well, everybody has a safe Halloween. But with the fair tax, you get the entire contents of your Halloween bag. That's right. No problem. That's right. And nobody can take it. So. But last week, uh, one of the biggest lottery jackpots ever was given away. And uh, we wanted to discuss about how the fair tax will uh, impact something like that. Yep. So there was a good bit of discussion going back and forth here in the Florida fair tax group. Our Karen Walby, our economist, was on this as well. Carrie Bowers as well had some information on it. So was you, it, you was a guest on Fair Tax yes, Power Radio a couple, couple of weeks, weeks ago. ago. You have got a wealth of information relative to how lottery winners. Now I realize that's a very very small percentage of the population, but it's a but lot of money. If you win a 1.6 billion dollar jackpot, you might want to know how taxes are going to affect that. Well, of course we know what happens. To the now, last week, some one person won the 1.6 billion mega uh, mega millions they call it. Okay, I think actually it was 1.5 something. But anyways, 1.6 billion. That's a lot and, of skydiving. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I think you'd wear yourself <laughs> out. Actually, you could buy your own plane. Oh, I could. There you Several. Go. Yeah. So and. Uh, not sure why you'd want to jump out of it after you bought it. Well, I wouldn't it, want anyways. to fly it and jump out at the same time. I'd get somebody else to fly it, and I can jump out. <laughs> but one person won it. So it's very simple. That person is going to have to pay a total of 37%. First, before they take anything, the government is going to take 25% off the top. That's withholding. To, yeah. Which uh, goes uh, away under the fair tax, with, by the way. Withholding for, for the uh, mega millions. Mega millions withholding. Mega millions worth of withholding. How do you love that? <laughs> and then they will catch up with you for the rest of it. But you're going to pay a total of 37%. So if you won $1.6 billion and you gave 37% of it either now or later eventually to Uncle Actually, Sam. Now and later. He gets you coming and going. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you, you're going to end up with uh, only... 1.008 billion. Oh, is that all? Still a lot of money, yeah. okay? I'm disappointed. How about under the fair tax? How, because this is on everybody's uh, minds because one person won that mega millions or near 1.6 billion. Well, under the fair tax, the winner will not pay any tax on it. Whatever the, the, the jackpot is, the winner or winners, they get the whole thing and nobody... Who's beeping at us? That was my phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I silenced right. my computer. I didn't <laughs> silence my phone. Sorry, guys. So, anyways, however, the sponsor is going to have to pay the fair tax on that, all right? And we wrote to Carrie Bowers, and uh, Carrie said, oh, under the fair tax, the winner will take home all their winnings, but those winnings will be reduced by the amount uh, to pay the federal taxes by the host or, or the sponsor of the, uh, of the lottery, whoever that is. So the sponsor is going to be responsible for, for paying the fair tax on, on what it is. So Hopefully Carrie's with us as this is streaming and can answer some of these questions that yeah. people might have. Yeah. So, uh, so, it will, so the sponsor will pay the 23%, and, of course, if there's state and local taxes, they'll be responsible for that. Well, we're just talking about the federal part of it. Okay, so the 1.6 might turn out to be a 1.23 billion. So the prize would only be 1.23 billion instead of 1.6. But the winner, the eventual winner, will take home the whole thing because there's no income tax under the yep. fair tax. You, you'll pay tax on that when you spend it, not when you receive it. So you can start dreaming about the next mega millions and see if we can get it up to over a billion dollars again. <laughs> and And at the same time, do, whoever won that, um, make a nice donation to the fair tax because the next time you win it, uh, you'll be able to keep the whole thing. Now there's a so, thought. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, the fair tax, you'll definitely do better. $1.23 billion as opposed to $1.0 billion, okay? And, and whatever the figure is, you're going to take home more under the fair tax than you do under the current income tax. Of course, a lot of times when these lotteries uh, advertise the size of their jackpots, they are saying that would be the total payout over 30 years. Now, if you yeah. take a lump sum, if you're an old retired guy like mine, you don't want to take it over 30 years because <laughs> you're probably not going to last that long. <laughs> if you want to take a lump sum, the lump sum is generally just a tick over half of what the advertised jackpot is. Is that what is. it but is? Still, that, yeah. that's, that's kind of a rule of thumb that I, I don't know much about lotteries. I, I've always considered the lottery a tax on greed and stupidity. It's money you pay the state <laughs> and get nothing back, you know. So I, I, I am neither greedy nor stupid, so I don't play the lottery very often. <laughs> Hardly well, ever. In fact, well, never. Say, I, I don't they, ever do that. Here but, uh, in Florida, the, the Florida lottery, they say billions to education. Well, so. there, there's another theory about that. They, the billions that they give to education, they take out of the general fund. So it's yeah. uh, the, that's, that's a weed I don't want to get into. Okay. But, uh, so, anyways. <laughs> anyhow, if you win the lottery under the fair tax, you get more money in your pocket than otherwise. So that's so, what you need to know. That is one reason, you know, the lottery, the mega, mega millions and the Powerball and all that stuff. Uh, that is one reason to go for the fair tax, all right? You big-time winners, you folks need to sponsor or, you know, help us out with the fair tax. You, you need to make a nice, generous donation to the Americans for Fair Taxation or the fair tax organization, whatever state you live in, yeah. because uh, we need to get this passed because the consumers, all of us, we're going to do a lot better with the fair tax. And, yeah. uh, but that reminds me of something that I remember seeing on our 1040 forums. Gambling winnings oh, yeah. are taxable. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's out of a lottery, whether you go to Las Vegas and hit the slot machines or you know, play a lot of blackjack or whatever. Gambling winnings, now, however you get them, are taxable income according to the IRS. But you talk about a way that you can evade. If you get a nice, big, fat cash settlement from winning uh, whatever you're playing, how many folks are going to report that? Yeah, I... You know, I've never done that, so I don't know. No, is, I don't either. Report. But I think over a certain amount they have to report it, but I'm not sure. But, yeah, I mean, gambling is, there's all kinds, there's big gambling and there's little gambling. So you win 50 bucks, you know, at some kind of a gambling venue, you're not going to report that. Unfortunately, you should. Technically, you're supposed you're to, and if you to, win 50 yeah. this week and 50 the next week and it adds up over time, then... Uh, so that's it, but there's that's, just a lot of there's a that's one of the many holes in the current income tax system, and Bob and I thought we would kind of segue into uh, um, the current system, and we use a good example. Remember a year and a half ago, uh, Paul Ryan came out with as uh, the Speaker of the House came out with his proposed tax plan. Uh, he called the Better Way. And uh, the, now Carrie, that has been displaced by the thing that passed last December. Yeah, but a yeah. lot of what was said during that process it's is amazing. very relevant, and uh, Carrie Bowers was was very helpful in digging up some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, he sent us some information because he poured over Paul Ryan's plan, 
you know, word for word. And what he found in there is that they paid lip service to consumption tax for some reason. All right, uh, Mr. Bryan and um, Kevin Brady, who was the uh, chair of the Ways and Means Committee and so forth, they extolled the virtues of the consumption tax. Now listen to this. Yeah, this is let's, let's read some of the quotes that were from this, this research that uh, they were having. Yeah. Consumption-based tax systems are widely recognized to be more pro-growth than income-based tax systems like the current tax code. So they realize that the income tax is a drag on the economy, yeah. but they won't get rid of it. <laughs> so they put that in the report, but then they ignored it. An income tax includes savings in the tax base and thus penalizes savings, whereas a consumption-based system, as the name suggests, taxes only what is consumed, not what is saved. They realize what's going on here, but you can see just how tight the grip that the lobbyists have on the Congress critters is that they realize that the current system is vastly inferior to a consumption tax. They're not speaking specifically of the fair tax here, but they are speaking of just consumption taxes in general, and they realize that the consumption tax is a much better thing for the economy than an income tax, and they will not get rid of the income tax. So we the people have got to light a fire under these folks and get them to change it. Now they know that savings is a very important part of, the, of a healthy economy. And they also know that the income tax hurts savings. So they ignored it again. As a result, income-based systems discourage savings and investment, which means slower capital accumulation, lower productivity, and therefore slower economic growth. They got that right. They yeah. just won't do anything about it. Yep. And then they ignored it. <laughs> Sub substantial empirical evidence shows that uh, moving more in the direction of a consumption taxation would have significant e economic benefits. But it's that funny, was, they, was, they tried to turn the income tax into a pretzel to realize the advantages of a consumption tax. They wanted to make the income tax act like a consumption tax. You can't do it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then finally, uh -huh. the last one there, economists at the OECD, which is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and elsewhere, have identified the corporate income tax as the most harmful of all forms of taxation in terms of the adverse effects on the growth. So that's in let Paul me, Ryan's better way. Let me repeat that. The corporate income tax is the most harmful of all forms of taxation in terms of adverse effect on economic growth. And that is why when uh, Leo Lindbeck and his friends out there in Houston all these years ago in the early 90s handed over a charge to the economists that they hired and said, find me the best tax system for the economy. Yeah. They did not come up with a corporate income tax. That's right. And yet you'll still see, we've got candidates here in Florida and I'm sure other parts of the country, well, the corporations have to have to pay their fair share. If I'm elected, we're, I'm going to fight to raise the, uh, the tax rate on the corporations. Well, what happens then? It's okay, a higher, we, we will ahead. explain this again. We have yep. done this time and again. If you put a tax liability on a business, be it a little mom and pop grocery store or Exxon Mobil or anywhere in between, yep. if you put a tax liability on a business, that is really no different than you know, labor costs, material costs. It is a cost of doing business. What happens to costs of doing business? They are rolled into the prices of the products and services that these businesses uh, perform and generate. So uh, the corporations do not pay taxes. They may have to write a check to Uncle Sam, but they don't pay the tax. The individuals pay the tax. The customers for their products and services pay the tax. Their shareholders pay the tax in terms of lower dividend rates. Right. And their employees pay the tax in terms of lower benefits and lower salaries. Mm -hmm. Individuals pay every bit of the corporate tax. And what's especially nasty with a corporate tax are the compliance costs that come with it. Oh, yeah. Holy Toledo. Yeah. The compliance cost in many cases is higher than the tax liability. Compliance costs, we're talking about money that business has to spend, like on tax attorneys and accountants and record keeping and this, all of the money that you have to spend just to make sure that you're complying with the tax code over and above the actual tax liability. And that becomes another cost of doing business. And that gets rolled downhill to the consumer 
why mess with all that? Get rid of that system and just let the consumer pay a uh, retail level consumption tax like the fair tax. So when you're at your town hall with the, or, or a candidate's uh, uh, promotion, you know. Yeah, bring one of these. Yeah, bring, <laughs> bring one of those. And they say, you know, we need to have the corporations pay their fair share. All right. You need to ask them. All right. What happens to the tax money? How does the corporation pay for that extra tax? They bill it to their customer or their employees. What is a corporation? A corporation is made of people. All right. So if you're going to put an extra tax on a corporation, you're putting an extra tax on people every time. It's not like it's this big thing off in the distance with a closet. And every time Uncle Sam or somebody ups the tax, they just open the closet and shovel out more money. No, people pay the corporate tax every single time. So don't fall for that. Corporations don't pay taxes, people pay yeah, taxes. The, the spin that they try to put on that is, oh, well, if we make the corporations pay more taxes, you individuals don't. Yeah. Well, you might, nope. have to, you, you might not have to pay as much on your income tax return, but you will pay more out of your pocket, again, because these costs of the tax liability and the compliance costs is all going to roll right downhill to your pocket when you buy things. Yeah. So don't yeah. think for a minute that raising the corporate rate is going to provide relief for individuals. It doesn't. It's just going to make things that you buy more expensive. So whether you win the big lottery or whether you work for somebody or you're self-employed, you're going to be better off under the fair tax. And uh, just, just to drive that point home, um, when, again, with, and this, this serves a purpose now, even though um, Kerry did an analysis of uh, The Better Way by Paul Ryan, yeah, so. a lot of that stuff is still in the current tax code because they didn't really reform the tax code. They modified it, and it's good. It's lower rates We and got so forth. relief. We didn't get reform. That's exactly right. All right. We still have the same type of tax code. It's still an income tax. In fact, I think Kerry made the point, as he said, they reformed the tax code and changed it from uh, a personal income tax a payroll tax and a corporate tax administered and enforced by the IRS, and they reformed it into a personal income tax, a payroll tax, and a corporate tax administered and enforced by the IRS. In other words, there's no real change. You know? no, no, so, no. so the, this is what they did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you anyways. go. So we've got a list, uh, Carrie made, uh, and thanks, Carrie, again. And remember, Carrie was a guest on Fair Tax Power Radio a couple weeks ago. You can go back and look at that. Very knowledgeable young man. Okay, uh, he listed 58 points here of how, and, and 57 of them, the fair tax is better than the income tax. <laughs> and the other one he is found, the tie. Yeah, and the only one that uh, eliminates estate taxes. Paul Ryan's uh, plan would eliminate the estate, uh, the estate tax. Um, so, uh, but all the others. So obviously, we're not going to go over all 58 of them. But I've uh, I've I, I identified a few of them that are very important. I, you know, highlighted some and I starred some others. A big one it eliminates the IRS. Don't It'll let anybody tell you that a flat tax that you can do on your you know a postcard size return will eliminate the IRS. It will not. Again, we have said over and over and over, a flat tax will not stay flat. It gets yep. just as big a mutt mess as, as the income tax That's does. That's right. And it doesn't matter how big the tax return form is, you still have to fill out a tax return, which yep. you no longer have to do with the fair tax. The no tax returns ever, no personal record keeping, how much you make, how you make it, none of the government's business anymore. And it's just a better way. Our better way is called the fair tax. Yeah. And I know Paul Ryan uh, 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 bragged that, well, they're going to fix, uh, uh, create a tax code in which your tax return could be done on a postcard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with the fair tax, there's no postcard. <laughs> yeah, there's no postcard. I don't want my social security number on a postcard where somebody going through the mail can yeah. read it. Yeah, but so. Anyhow, but uh, anyway, the idea, if you, even if you were able to accomplish that, I guarantee you, within a couple of years, that postcard would suddenly become a piece of paper. Then it would become four or five pieces of paper. Then it'd become Absolutely. fifteen or twenty pieces of paper, and <clears throat> it would just continue to get worse because the lobbyists are going to continue to be buying favorable tax treatment for their clients as long as Congress critters need campaign cash. Yeah. 
Yeah, what did we say in last week's episode? There was over 1,600 proposals to change the tax code? Oh, I actually, I still have it up here on the computer. 1,600 and scroll back to the top of the page. 1,639. 1,639 proposals to change the tax code. Now, not all of those will become law, but some of them will. To the at the rate of almost one change per day that Congress is in session. Actually, it's more than that. It actually, more than one day change per calendar year makes it into law. Wow, that's so, nuts. That, that's and we're insane. responsible for all of those changes. You know, we're responsible. Now, if you know you have simple taxes like Bob and I, I mean, we're retired, we get the, the software and you know, you just answer the questions and so forth. And you hope the people that created the software did their job, you know, properly. So you can so you can send in the, the right amount, but all that goes away under the fair tax. So the, the IRS is, is gone because there's no income tax. And if you don't have an income tax, you don't need an internal revenue service to collect the income tax. Okay. How will the fair tax be collected? The, the fair tax will be collected by retailers that, you know, offer retail sale for new products and services. And it, it's just like the sales tax. It's, yeah. a, it's a percentage of the price of the thing. So you pay it anonymously. The retailer collects it. Their computer system keeps track of how much is collected. Yeah. They, they send in a little bit to their various uh, state departments of revenue. And that's another thing. The Internal Revenue Service, national in scope, it's, it's in charge with enforcing the income tax all over the country. With the fair tax, instead of one enforcement agency, you've got 50 because yeah. there are 50 different states. Yep. So and that's how it's going to work. It's going to be collected just like the state sales tax. 45, I think, out of the 50 states have got a state sales tax. All of the point of sale software is already, you know, programmed to, to handle that. It'll be a very simple addition to add the fair tax to it. And the computer system at uh, Kmart and uh, Walmart and uh, Target and all those other different places. And in fact, you know, like what, 500 big box stores are responsible for well over 90 percent of the That's sales. Right. That's so right. you, your enforcement is going to be uh, much less involved. So it'll be much more effective. We've always had a lot less evasion under the fair tax. Yep. So that's how it's collected by the retailers, remitted to the states, and the retailers will be able to keep a little portion. I think it's like a quarter of 1%. It's not a whole lot. But uh, they will be able to keep some of what they collect for their troubles. So they are incentivized to charge the tax, not help people evade it. That's right. Yep. And, and their computers are going to do all the work. Yeah, <laughs> it will. It's no big deal. <laughs> Uh, one of the things I've highlighted here, best potential for returning jobs to America. This is a big deal. Right now, we are chasing companies away uh, with what's called, uh, called uh, inversion, tax inver mm -hmm. inversion. All right? the, a company can set up a business here where the tax rate is, what, 35%? It was 39. I think it's down to 21, but it's still oh, that's a lot. Right. Yep. I, I stand corrected. All right, so it is a significant reduction. Or they can set it up in, say, Ireland, where the uh, corporate tax rate is 12 points, uh, 12, 12 and a half percent. That's a big difference. And yeah, we, it's probably not so bad now with a corporate tax rate reduced to 21. But still, we, if you have a higher corporate tax than another country, there's a chance you're going to lose businesses and they're going to put their headquarters in that country and then maybe, you know, do some things here. But it doesn't matter what the rate is. The compliance costs are the same. Yeah. Whether it's a 39% or a 21%, the compliance costs that yeah. are rolled into the price of all the products and services we yeah. buy, yeah. it doesn't matter what the tax rate is as far as affecting those compliance costs. They've still got to pay their tax attorneys. They've still got to spend a lot of time doing their record keeping. They've still got to, you know, all of the costs that are associated with uh, working under this income tax system are the same regardless of what the rate is. And so... It is, I love this again, the corporate income tax, the most harmful of all forms of taxation in terms of adverse effect on growth because that's what it causes forces to do. And it makes American companies less competitive in the global marketplace when you've got the embedded costs of our tax system embedded into the price of stuff that they're trying to sell on the global market against competitors that don't have that impediment working against them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We're at, our companies are at a severe disadvantage under the current income tax. Uh, like Bob says, the compliance costs are horrible. In many cases, especially for fall, small businesses, the compliance costs are worse than the tax itself. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's another one here that I've starred. Uh, best potential for returning jobs to America. 
That's the fair yeah, tale. You've already I, said I, that. I'm sorry. Let's go I, to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Senior moment. Senior, You're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, best potential to preserve individual financial privacy. Bingo. Ooh. It is no longer the government's business how much money you make, where you make it, how much you spend. It is none of the government's business. Your personal financial details are, you know, actually... Uh, the income tax returns are supposed to be confidential. Yeah. Although there are there are some some folks that would uh, that would leak it out if you're a, a certain high level target that wants that they want to know what you're telling your tax return. But uh, you get you have your own. It's anonymous. The fair tax is anonymous. You right. pay the sales tax in the price of the things you buy. The store knows how much was collected. It doesn't know who it came from. That's it doesn't right. know how much money you've got. doesn't know how you've made that money. It is completely anonymous. Your personal financial details remain your business and your business only with the fair tax. And yeah. it's not that way with the income tax now. You know, the, uh, the IRS has a bunch of old computers. Their, their computer systems are not up to date. And they're getting hammered daily by scammers that are trying to crack them and get personal information. And we hear all the time. I don't know if we hear much about the IRS. Maybe they won't admit it. But we hear about this company or that company. A million records were compromised and so forth. And people's per personal financial, you know. Uh, same, with the, uh, same with the IRS. Their, their computers are constantly under, under attack by hackers trying to get our information. So if we had a system that didn't include our information, then our financial security would be secure. So, Much better. Yep. So I'll tell you what. Yep. You, you got three minutes left. You got time for one more. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, best potential to eliminate individual tax evasion. Tax evasion is a huge problem in the, the multi hundreds of billions of dollars that people, uh, right, th this year, about $734 billion that's not going to be collected, that should be collected, because people are simply evading the income tax. It's all, all too easy to do, unfortunately. How do you evade a tax that's part of the price of things you buy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you go into Walmart, you know, the big box stores that Bob was mentioning, you go into these stores, you buy a coffee maker or a new TV or whatever, a pair of jeans, all right? You can't evade the tax. You tell them, I don't, don't want to pay the sales tax. And they say, tough. Yeah, too bad. <laughs> I'm getting a piece of it, so I'm going to charge it. <laughs> so, so, anyways, yeah, evasion under, the, uh, under a consumption tax is extremely low. Evasion under the current income tax is very high, to the point that about one in five people are not paying their income tax, and the rest of us are making up for it. Not a good situation, okay? Mm. Well, so. I hope, hopefully the Congress creditors will figure that out one of these days. Yeah. Since they are addicted to spending money, if they realize that the system that they are using to collect it now is just leaving tons of cash on the table, that they might fix it. Okay, we've got under yeah. two minutes here. Okay, we want to mention Pop Fox. We haven't talked about this in oh, a couple of weeks. I haven't mentioned that in a while, have yeah, we? Yeah, popfox.com, uh, that is a great website where you can go on and uh, weigh in on every piece of uh, legislation that's being proposed in Congress, including the fair tax, H.R. 25 in the House and S. 18 in the Senate. All right, so we encourage you, you go on to PopFox, you have to register with your name and address because that way they know what congressional district you're in and they know who your congressmen and your senators are and things like that. So... Um, PopVox.com is a great way for you to voice your opinion, and we ask you to go on there and uh, tell them that you're in favor of the fair tax, and you can search out some other tax plans and tell them why they won't work. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, we remind folks our email address, thefairtaxguys at gmail.com, thefairtaxguys at gmail.com. If you've got a question or comment about the fair tax, we will be glad to uh, respond to you there. Our f Facebook page as well. You can leave us a question or a comment there as well and uh, leave us a very thoughtful question and comment and we will uh, address it here on Fairtax Power Radio. Don't forget the Fairtax Logo Store, fairtaxlogostore.org. You can get uh, information cards, you can get these smaller business cards, we call them the prebate cards, basic information, uh, the Fairtax on one side, the prebate schedule on the back side, pins, pens, hats, shirts, all kinds of promotional stuff. Buy your fair tax gear and show it off. That way, 
you get other people wondering, well, what is this fair tax? You know, I, I heard something about this fair tax. I'm going to have to learn more no. about it. Free shipping. Free, yeah, free shipping. That's right. All right. That's going to wrap up this edition of Fair Tax Power Radio. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Molero. We are the Fair Tax Guys, reminding you again that the Fair Tax is America's big solution. And once you understand it, you'll demand it.